Hi guys, so Patrick Minford is a Brexiteer and an economist. Hopefully you can get past that contradiction. Now he's going to talk about how WTO rules facilitate seamless trade and how the EU, not the UK, is putting up barriers. So let's hear what he had to say. Well, of course, Brexit is about a lot more than um, our trade with the EU. And that's an important point. We, the object of Brexit is to get free trade with the rest of the world. And a lot of people haven't understood that, um, that the EU put huge barriers between us and our trade with the rest of the world. Actually, that's not entirely true because the EU have have uh, completed a trade deal, a free trade deal with Japan. The EU is working on a trade deal with the United States. The EU is working on a trade deal with Australia. So if the EU is interested in just putting up barriers, why would they be working towards trade deals? Trade deals bring down barriers. And that's what free trade agreements, which is the, one of the major points of Brexit, are going to achieve. And so then why would you want to put up barriers with your, with your biggest neighbour, your biggest market? You know, Brexiteers are always pumping out this idea that, you know, we need to leave our biggest market in order to facilitate trade with smaller markets. That doesn't make any sense. If Brexit is about reducing barriers, eliminating barriers, then why did Boris Johnson and Brexiteers want to put up barriers? And bring down the costs of trade with the rest of the world, which has got very little attention, of course, in all this. It's perfectly true that there are now, there is now a border with the EU. And as, as your um, interviewer said, everybody knew that. And the point about at the border after this trade agreement is that under WTO rules, that border ought to be seamless, what's called seamless, i.e. Um, things should go through it with a minimum of inspection between most developed countries. Okay, there's nothing in, w in the rules of the WTO that say that there should be seamless trade. They would like seamless trade, but there's nothing in the rules of the WTO that say that. Now, what's interesting is that Patrick said here, let me let you listen to it again, exactly the words he used. ...ought to be seamless, what's called seamless, i.e. Um, things should go through it with a minimum of inspection between most developed countries. Between most developed countries. So what he's trying to, he's trying to play on the idea that the UK is a developed country. The EU is a developed bloc. So there should be seamless trade. Well, there used to be seamless trade and him and other Brexiteers voted to end that. But what he's trying to, and you've, you probably hear this um, argument from Brexiteers all the time. Yes, we're a third country, but stop treating us like a third country. Yes, we voted to become a third country, but don't treat us like a third country. We're special. Remember, we used to be an empire. The... The Brexiteers don't seem to understand. Actually, he used the word developed country. Now, I don't know if uh, Patrick Minford doesn't know the difference. He's an economist, so he should know the difference. But he doesn't know the difference between a third country and a third world country. What he's trying to do is, and other Brexiteers have done this as well, they're trying to say that the EU is treating us like a third world country. And the EU is not treating you like a third world country. It's treating you like a third country. You decided to become a third country. So you can't say, how dare you treat us like a third country? The Brexiteers want, like Patrick Minford, want the, U the EU to give the UK some special treatment. And the EU have said, no, we're not giving you special treatment because we need to protect the single market. If we treat you in a, in a special way, then we're going to undermine the single market. And I'm sorry, we're not going to undermine the single market because Brexiteers wanted. Brexiteers wanted this. They wanted to be a third country. And now they're complaining that, that they're a third country. But once again, 
about the WTO, there's nothing in the WTO rules that say that there should be seamless trade between developed countries um, or that the EU should allow goods uh, to move across the border without checks. 97% of trade actually goes through without inspection at all. What we're seeing now is a huge transitional issue as... Because if there are two countries, they come to an agreement and say, look, let's allow the trade to pass without checks. That's, that's an agreement between the two countries. In many cases, the, the country's goods are probably the standards they have are aligned. The UK doesn't want to align with the EU. So the EU are said, okay, if you're not going to align with us, then you'll have to uh, face checks. But you decided this. Remember, you know, this is all new. It was not the case. It was not necessary to have any of these checks a month ago. But Brexiteers wanted this. And now they're complaining. Um, the trade with the EU that used to not have a border at all now faces a border. So but what, what, we what we're hearing from, but, but if I may just finish, uh, Martine. Yes, of course. What we're hearing at the moment is, of course, completely uh, predictable transitional problems as the system moves over to having a border. And unfortunately, the EU, unlike us, has not been very cooperative with firms. <laughs> it's not, it's so it, this is the EU's fault. So the UK decided to leave. The EU said, look, if you leave, you're going to face checks. The response from Brexiteers at the time was, no, you will not. This is Project Fear. And now that you're seeing these checks, the blame is on the EU. So the EU said, if you leave, you're going to face these problems. Brexiteers said, that's a big pile of lies. The UK left facing these problems. And the, what is the response of Brexiteers? How dare the EU impose these restrictions? How dare the EU treat our companies with such disrespect? About this new border, but under WTO rules, in the long run, it's got to be cooperative or it will be illegal. Where? Please point, in, <laughs> point to me where in the WTO rules it's illegal to have checks on the border. Now, what he's doing here is he's once again, engaging in this type of exceptionalism, British exceptionalism. I'm sorry to call it, but that's what it is. The Brexiteers want Britain to be treated differently than other third countries. Remember, I'm using the word third countries, not third world countries. Although it could be argued that some Brexiteers want to turn the UK into a third world country, a hermit nation, a North Korea in Europe. But that's a, that's a different point. Brexiteers voted for this. They didn't understand actually what they were voting for. If they were honest, they would say, look, I didn't understand what I was voting for. This is a mistake. Can we undo it? Um, the only way to undo this would be to rejoin the single market and the customs union. You could do it and you would eliminate all these problems. But for people like Patrick, these are either not problems or if they are problems, it's nothing to do with Brexit. It's all the EU's fault. They can go around and round in circles for, for years trying to blame the EU, but it's not going to fix the problem. Brexiteers will continue to blame the EU for, for X, Y, and Z, but I would ask people, stop blaming the EU. How are you going to fix the problem? If you say, well, we can't fix the problem, then I would say, well, then stop blaming the EU, because if you can't fix it, what's the point in talking about it? Let's provide some solutions. You know, if somebody has a solution and the solution is to rejoin the EU, or at least the single market and the customs union, then maybe that should be something considered. But Brexiteers will continue to say, no, we don't want to go down that road. So we're, 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 <laughs> we're suffering these consequences of Brexit here is a possible solution, but we don't want to use that solution. We'd prefer to sit on our hands. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important 
and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee, so why not check it out?